Enscape's latest update gives us two brand new ways to impress our clients. What's going on team? My name is David Tomich. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And today we're talking about the Cosmos library and of course, sharing our projects on the web. You're no longer gonna need an overpriced Mac studio or a custom built rendering PC to be able to view, move through and explore your Enscape renders. To make today's tutorial incredibly easy to follow along, I'm using an Enscape sample project, which you can download right now through the Enscape website. So you can simply Google Enscape example projects and it will take you to this sample page here. There's a number of different examples available to you to download for different modeling software. So for example, if you're running Revit, you can download any of these six projects. SketchUp, there's five, plus another two below. There's even projects for Rhino and Archicad, of course. The one I'm using in this particular example video is the Vertical Apartment. And I've gone ahead and downloaded the PLN. But if you're not using Archicad and you still wanna follow along, you can download the standalone Enscape file. Now, obviously this is an old Enscape file, but it gets automatically converted with the latest features. After that, we open it up in Archicad and you can see all of the Enscape objects added in orange and of course the base model itself. Now I'm using this sample project today because we're talking about Enscape. We're not talking about Archicad, we're not talking about modeling, we're talking directly about Enscape. So let's come back in to Enscape itself. You'll see in the top left-hand corner, if we go to our view management, there's been a number of scenes set up, which we'll get back to in a minute because that is critically important for our cloud sharing. But let's have, just have a quick skim through. If we go to the exterior entrance, it'll show you the entrance of this building. Then we can go to the backyard with the lovely pool and the deck chairs. There's even a backyard nighttime scene, which more so primarily focuses on the lighting and the change of the sky. Of course, we have our interior ground where we started, our interior first floor, which is like a sitting room and a library, and then our master bedroom at the very, very top. Finally, there's an AXO and a perspective, neither of which I'm generally gonna use for this project, hence we stick to the favorites. Let's start by going to the bedroom itself. There are a number of objects in this scene that are really nice. It's been well curated, well thought out, with plenty of detail from the rug to the bed, to the books on the bedside table, and even the pendant light. But let's say we don't like this bed. We want something even better. Well, thankfully, Enscape has now introduced the Cosmos library. And in this version right here, right now, we're using the Cosmos UI, but all of the features and all of the objects haven't been imported just yet. That's coming in the next couple of days. So by the time you're watching this video and testing it out, you're gonna have access to the brand new Cosmos library. That library is going to grow to 14,000 plus objects specific for Enscape and real-time rendering by the end of 2026. If you're using any other Chaos product, then that library will grow to over 30,000 objects. However, the 14,000 has been specifically formatted for real-time rendering in Enscape. So at the moment, we still have our Enscape library and the Cosmos parts coming soon. But if we want to replace that bed, simply type in bed, scroll down until you found what you really, really like, download it, and then you can drag it into your scene as you normally would. If you're wondering what's coming to the Cosmos library, we can just have a quick look at the Chaos website and the Cosmos library itself. Nevertheless, the Cosmos library helps us impress our clients, but now we actually have to get this information to them somehow. We don't want them going out and buying a $3,000 computer like his rendering machine next to me or a $5,000 Mac studio. We want them to be able to use it on whatever device they have. So that means they can use it on their mobile phone, they can use it on their iPad, or they can just use it on standard browser. And for us as architects and designers, it's super, super simple to get them this model. You just come across the top, hit the share scene button in the menu. Make sure you're in the latest version of Chaos Cloud by updating. After that, you just press upload. It'll take a couple minutes to upload to the cloud, depending on how fast your internet speed is. But even my internet speed, which is about 50 to 100 megabytes a second, generally doesn't take longer than three or four minutes. Once it's completed, you can either share it directly via the share button or you can open it in the cloud. Now I'll preface this part with the simple fact this is still a beta version. So there might be some bugs, there might be some tweaks that are gonna come in the near future. But generally speaking, from what I've experienced, it's 
pretty good. It'll ask you if you wanna start your 3D interactive session when you press the play button, you just go, yes, start. You'll notice you have a 60 minute duration and a 30 minute inactive timeout. Now, because this is obviously loading on the web, it's gonna take a couple minutes again to download the model you've just uploaded. But you'll see in the, in the top center, this project has now gone live. And there are a couple features inside the cloud version that are incredibly useful for collaboration between you and your client or even you and other team members. But again, we'll get there in just a second. Once the project is loaded, you're gonna get a basic navigational controls dialog box pop up. Basically, you're moving around the same way you would in Enscape. But if a user's never used it on their computer before, you know, it gives them a very quick run through. We go ahead and close that box and we're standing in the exact same scene we were a second ago. What you'll notice straight away is it's trying to render out this scene in the absolute best quality. So it doesn't matter if you've uploaded it from a Mac or a Windows with ray tracing or without ray tracing, it's going to try to find the absolute best resolution it can. So if somebody new here is just looking at this model, you know, they can click around, pan around as if it was a 360 degree panorama, which is super easy for anybody to use. They can zoom in and out using the scroll wheel, but then what makes it super easy for new users is the viewpoints on the side. That's why I recommend making as many as you can in Enscape to be able to enhance your user's experience. Because yes, they might be able to fly around here, press the view key, move through, explore the entire project in full detail, go into this spare bedroom, have a quick little look around, but they might not enjoy that experience. They might just want to look at the main information you provided. So we simply click on the interior back. It automatically flies them to the backyard, which means they can have a look around. They can see their green wall. They can see their tree, their deck. And if they wanted to fly a little bit forward to be able to see things behind, they very, very easily could without having to learn too much of the software. Now, let's say they've made it into the interior space here. And for whatever reason, they want to make a comment about anything in the scene. Generally, they type an email and send you a whole bunch of bullet points, which then you have to figure out, okay, point one relates to this staircase, point two relates to this brick wall. Instead, we can go to the comment section, click anywhere in the scene we wanna make a comment, type in our comment and press create. Now, anybody using this software as a collaborator, as a contributor, can easily find this comment and understand what you're talking about. If you think about it like Adobe's PDF comment feature, you can simply highlight, drag, or annotate any part of the document. People don't have to search for information about what you're talking about. It just speeds up the entire process. And you can repeat that time and time again. So for example, if we want a red bricks instead of black bricks, we just type in red bricks, click on that other comment, and it'll link you back to the first floor level above. If we fly above to the next scene, those comment bubbles are still relevant. They're still there whilst we're still on the comment mode. If you don't wanna see those comments, just come across to the eyeball on the right-hand side, toggle it off and all of the comment boxes will disappear. Down the bottom, there's a couple extra features for the advanced users once they start to become familiar with Enscape web-based platform. We can of course take a screenshot, capture it, annotate it, do whatever we want. We can change from fly to walk. We can change from slow to fast to normal. And then we can change the time of day, which is quite interesting as well. So if this is an 8 a.m. scene, we can start adjusting the scene and we see different shadows. So if somebody was contemplating how this pool would look at 4.30 in the afternoon in August, well, it would be fully shaded. But in February, it would almost be nighttime. Now, this has obviously been set up to the European standard in Australia, that would be back to front but the logic and concept is exactly the same. 10.30, you'd have a beautiful sunny spot. Two other advanced features, if you wanna remove all of the additional UI, you can click on the main screen and it will hide all of the viewports, the menu down the bottom and menu on the side, and you just click again to come back, or you can go full screen mode to take up as much space as humanly possible. To exit full screen mode, you just hit the escape button on your keyboard. Anyway, that is all for me today, team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash the subscribe button down below. And like always, I'll see you next week.